Hello, everyone, and welcome to this. It's Thursday. It's the free one. Free episode of TF. That's right. I know the days of the week now. Huh. You challenged me, and I rose to the challenge. <laughs> Next, you're going to be learning more than just basic shapes. That's right. That's right. I can put them all. Well, I worked out that actually with the shape sorter, most of them fit through the square. Uh-huh. So, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The I round to, peg goes in the square hole just fine. I want to imagine, uh, like, uh, kin- kindergarten LinkedIn, where it's just like, uh, <laughs> are you waste? Are you wasting valuable snack time putting mm. matching shapes to holes? Try mm. my square hole method. I'm actually a certified expert in nap time. I wake up from my nap at 4 p.m. and immediately begin managing my Bitcoin portfolio. Well, I'm selling <laughs> rusks to the people in kindergarten A. Speaking of Bitcoin, <laughs> uh, do you know that uh, Bitcoin is back? Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, after the, well... Feels like uh, well, every week Bitcoin is back, and then it never mm, really mm. stays back. Well, let me be clear. Bitcoin isn't oh, back. Let me be clear. It's, what's happened is the Fed has indicated that they're probably done their tightening cycle and they may start cutting soon, uh, which means that... Yeah, bi- their bulking season is over, <laughs> fellas. The Fed is going to start getting yeah. shredded. Yeah, they're done bulking the economy and they're now trying mm. to shred. Uh, so, of course, obviously, like... An asset like Bitcoin, people will just flood into because it's speculative. Mm. Uh, so, but what I've noticed, which is really fun, is that you can almost think of this as like a technical indicator. When Bitcoin crosses forty thousand dollars, then immediately it starts generating blog posts about how it's the future of Western civilization again. Mm. 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 And it's above the forty thousand dollar parapet, and people are like, "Oh, Bitcoin's back!" It's like a wacky inflatable arm flailing tube man from in front of a car dealership. You know, yeah. it crossing forty thousand dollars is like it being turned on, and it starts like waving its arms and stuff as though it's alive. And people are like, "It's oh, we were wrong. It's it's back." And then eventually the power gets turned off again, and people are like, "Oh well, yes, that, there goes that dream." <laughs> uh, no, and also of course the speculation that a Bitcoin ETF could be approved soon means, of course, people are are flooding in, hoping either to find a sucker or to have invested in the future of money while everyone else has fun being poor. Oh, so I to, don't... to have mm. a sucker, to, to find a sucker, or to be a sucker, then? <laughs> Indeed. And the more, num- the more that number goes up, the more <laughs> people pile into one of those two camps. Hmm. Yeah, either you find a sucker or you get sucked. <laughs> yeah. The two uh, genders. Mm. So what's really funny, though, is like... Um, uh, I was because I I tend to follow this stuff. Um, I I I'll look like oh yeah, uh, J P Morgan is doing a new bank in Decentraland as like a crypto mm. education center. What are they doing with that now? And they've mothballed that particular a uh, virtual room. Mm. Oh. Uh, surprising. Mothballed right? a virtual room. There's like virtual moths that are being yeah. kept out by the virtual mothballs. Uh, but. Keep uh, the lights off in that virtual room, JP Morgan. But now that it's about, they can open up that virtual room again so that people mm. can come learn about crypto in the metaverse with JP Morgan. Yeah, but don't now with legs. Well, you know, look, yeah, we know, look, what they say is like, there are virtual rooms with your friends and there are virtual rooms like, that are filled with sharks. I think, I think, so, mm. I think that's what the, the financial <laughs> proverb yeah. was. Yeah, uh, sure. I, can't, yeah. I can't remember. Is, is Fortnite overrated? A question being asked in JP Morgan's <laughs> virtual room. But what I thought was really like a, a holdover from the last crypto speculative bubble was um, something that was sent to me by some, uh, by some friends at, at the FT. Some friends of ours some friends on, the, of on ours. the other side of the FT paywall. <laughs> some, oh. friends, some friends of ours at Alphaville um, <laughs> have sent to yeah. us. Yeah, Wiggins is connected. Has sent to us <laughs> a friend of ours in Hong Kong. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> uh, um, this uh, this this revelation that France, while well, courting its cryptocurrency industry players, right? Binance was their chosen mm. winner, which is admittedly very funny because he's like speaking at the Elysee Palace and arrested like moments later. So uh, Binance, right? Uh, Binance is um, uh, wormed its way into the French state. Right mm, by uh, France. Uh, CZ mm. was a little bit like uh, Sam was. Uh, Bankman Fried was to uh, you know the American sort of regulatory a- atmosphere. Mm. Yeah, he was. He was Sam Bonk on <laughs> Fried. Very good. Very good. Uh, so it says uh, behind a seemingly benevolent charity program, Binance has used aggressive tactics to solicit people to use its services in some of France's most deprived areas. Uh, its promise was to train students from all walks of life the technical skills required to find employment in blockchain-related industries. And so people would be... Have you heard of Dogecoin? 
So people would. Sh- <laughs> Can I sell you some Dogecoin? Huh? Utilize. Perhaps you would prefer Ethereum. <laughs> Is the most versatile Ezer. blockchain. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and, and contract smart. I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. I'm I'm listening to the music of Plastic Bertrand on Deezer. <laughs> we do not use Spotify <laughs> because we are French. We have our own thing. It is called Deezer. Uh, so. Uh, that if you're like accepting um like in like work benefits in in France like 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 welfare yeah. benefits you can be compelled to do very like here you know you can be compelled to do various things mm. oh yeah you you have you have a yeah. coach yeah. to work who to, you, your coach yeah. to travail who will send you on a little mm. course so that so you your become coach a good to travail in this case is a Binance employee uh <clears throat> oh. so good. with the uh. In the, in the article, it says last October. It's re- it's really funny to to go. Okay, we've gotten the experts in having a real job, crypto well, guys. What, what the what the course is right? There's very little programming. It's mostly just blockchain awareness. And w- <laughs> what we all know is that. <laughs> You have to do like a blockchain awareness course. Your your court ordered Binance commercial. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's um. Uh, so the uh, the course. <laughs> Il faut que je connais le binance. <laughs> it says it lasted half a day and consisted mm-hmm. of a slideshow on blockchain technology followed by short practical exercises. Moreover, what are the stu- practical exercises? Like coding exercises. Oh, okay. Students received Binance goodie bags, branded hats, promotional elite books, notebooks, excuse me. They were asked to download MetaMask wallets. And then in, a ca- in the class, they were told they needed to set up an account to receive the, uh, on Binance to receive their NFT diploma and then receive dozens of promotional emails <laughs> encouraging them to gamble. It's essentially like saying to someone 50 years ago, hey, you're out of a job. Don't worry. Go down to the dog track and either you can mm. work at the dog track or maybe make some money betting. <laughs> ah, le track du chien. Yeah. Ah ouais. <laughs> uh, je, je, j'aime bien boire une uh, bovril show. Uh, <laughs> so, depuis je regarde les chiens. <laughs> this is properly fucked, though. The idea that, like, oh, you, you can't find work. Well, have we got a scam mm, for you? Yeah. I, in a sense, it's like, there are a few things I think that are extremely honest, and this is one of them. Yeah. Which is, yeah, can't find work. Mm. Economy's all scams. Why don't you get into the scam business? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, t- yeah. not not the worst advice, to be honest. Yeah. So what else can you do in France? I mean, come on, sell strings of start garlic. Up, start up nation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, but I'd like to cross the channel uh, back across to the UK. It, mm, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, they're making that harder and harder to do. Indeed, mm. thing, and this is part of well, the problem. Well, I, I don't know if you all knew this, but we are in fact a reasonable country, and our patience Ooh. has now run out. So it was tweeted out by the um, 10 Downing Street official account. Ooh, hard man. Yeah. Like, I, Rishi Sunak pulling this shit is sad and dire. Um, uh, yeah, can, uh, we, can we get this right, in the yeah. Sunak voice, please? Okay, yeah. We're a reasonable country, but our patience has now run out. Our parliament is sovereign, and it should be able to make decisions that cannot be undone in our courts. That's what this emergency legislation delivers. I love it when legislation can't be challenged in a court. The things that are supposed to adjudicate legislation. That's good. Well, so the thing that the thing that's currently happening now is the Tory party is in a kind of like minor civil war more than usual. Um because mm. What is it they want to do with what's yeah. the le- emergency legislation? Mm. Okay, so what they want to do, we've talked about this before, is to deport pretty much anyone they want to Rwanda. Yeah. And the Supreme Court said, no, you can't do that because you haven't done the correct like scrutiny to prove that Rwanda is like a safe place to deport people to. And they're like, guys, um, the reason why we didn't do that scrutiny is because it's not. So if we did the scrutiny, then it would just say you can't do that. So obviously we're not going to do it. Like, what's the problem? Exactly. Exactly. Mm. And and so essentially you cannot do what they want to do, which is to deport these people legally. And so what you have instead is this divide in the Tory party between the sort of honest minority of far-right fascist wingnuts like Lee Anderson who are just saying, okay, we'll do it without the pretense of legality and just do it. Um, And then, you know, some kind of milky, like, one-nation Tories who are like, ooh, don't do that. Um, And then the sort of coward centre embodied by Rishi Sunak who's like, okay, 
well, what we what we want to do is impossible to do legally. Mm. What we are going to do is try harder. Yeah, and do so it illegally. You have this. Well, no, not a, not at all. To 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 like try to make it legal to do the illegal mm. thing in a way that will not yeah. work. Mm. So what the bill that has that's that's coming through is going to do is essentially it is going to tell British courts, no, Rwanda is a safe country. Mm-hmm. Mm. Trust us. Yeah. We've also, made it legally true. Mm-hmm. We've yeah, written that, it down. Yeah. That is what the logic is. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, remember how a legal there was a legal distinction between a scotch egg being a meal or not if it served with a salad. Yeah. It's this same uh, application of just one lens, right? The, of yeah. trying to sort of force reality and, through it. Uh, we just yeah. call and, it and, an egg. Yeah. Oh, please. Yeah. And there, there are some provisions in there that they uh, like exempt bits of the Human Rights Act from from being applied mm. here, and they specifically say that you can't. If the ECHR, if the European Court of Human Rights, is like trying to stay a flight, is trying to like stop a flight mm. from taking off, you are forced to ignore that. But uh, despite the fact that this is already like constitutionally ruinous and terrible, mm. it still allows. As the this is what the Tory right have been going insane about, it still allows the prospect of individual legal challenges from people who are being deported because they're people. And what the the Tory right want is no, you should not have any legal process around this whatsoever because you you cannot stop using the kind of legal framework that we have already. Just one individual person that you are deporting from being able to go to court and say, is this legal or not? Uh, and that's what they want to do, and it's it's not really possible. I do really like the idea that even in like this this attempt, the attempt to sort of push this through as like legislation, which isn't really quite yeah. legislation. It's more of a sort of like this is this is how we view the world, and if you say anything to the contrary, then we're going to deport you to Rwanda. Um, but like within that is how also would just you like, like to go to it, Rwanda. It re- <laughs> uh, it, it would well. You can be deported to Rwanda, but you uh, but but you have to buy a cider and also a carvery dinner. Mm, um, that's right. But like, well, like built built within that is also just this attempt for the Tories to just like do their favorite thing, which is not to govern but still hold power. And so, mm. to me, this yes. sort of yeah. it does it, it it does really speak to this idea of like even at this stage where they are sort of seeking like the most desperate strategies and solutions to push this through to sort of like meet this one goal, which like everyone has said right from the offset, this is not going to happen. Like again, like forces of the world, which has, which is not just like the fact that people move and have always moved, but the fact that climate catastrophe and wars will mean that this happens more and more regularly. And if you don't kind of build the infrastructure or at least make an effort to curtail that, then this is going to continue to happen. There. Oh, the, like Suella approach- Braverman wants to build some infrastructure, though. Mm-hmm. Um, have you yeah, heard well, about the? Yeah. Have you heard about this? She, um, her, her latest position that she has staked out to for attention is we should do Nightingale detention centres mm-hmm. after the sort of model of Nightingale oh, hospitals that we did for COVID. So- and we should just so we should, and get guess what? Once again, have the military do it. Have the army do it. Get the MOD in. Sorry, the Florence Nightingale Extrajudicial Detention Center yes. is yeah. such a funny concept. And like to be honest, would be it would be more correctly yeah. reflective of Florence I Nightingale's do- legacy in the sense of how many people will fucking die in them. Um I, but yeah, I don't know. No, yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know whether ever we whether we we said this on the show or whether I heard it from somewhere else. But it is basically a few steps removed from like the Paddington Paddington themed black sites. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Where you get deported but, to Peru I mean, on the Paddington the, flight. Yeah. I mean, I, I will put down a marker now, right? Which is, it is impossible to deport anyone to Rwanda with the like and still pretend that you're doing it legally. Mm. I think it is far more likely than not that no one will be deported to Rwanda, uh, that it was a dead letter as soon as the Supreme Court judgment came down. And what this is, is a series of like scuffles around who is going to be, you know, where the battle lines are going to be for the next Tory yeah. civil war. Yeah. Um, and Robert Jenrick, the immigration minister who was like in this kind of like Sunak, like mm. cowardice caucus, sort of noisily resigned to to join the far right here. And it's it's like, okay, well, this is making it very clear that this kind of Sunak managerial position is not anywhere that the Tory party is going to be going in the wilderness. It's amazing to be resigning um, over this and be resigning in the opposite direction. Like you're not you're not yeah. doing enough insane right-wing shit 
However, may I also say yeah. that it is very darkly funny that the only government globally that the Tories could get to cooperate with them on this kind of like Rube Goldberg deportation scheme was Rwanda, <laughs> because the only country which is like our PR can't be damaged by cooperating with the British Tory party is one who's like, you've heard of us for the genocide. However... <laughs> And it gets worse because now they won't. Like, mm. this is the thing. Rwanda are threatening to pull out of the deal mm. if the deal is like, it, you know, breaks international law, which any implementation of it would flagrantly. So it's it's just... I want to pull, pull back, though, right? And look at the logic of what's happening. And it's something that we've seen the edges of for a while and we've been trying yeah. to suss out, which is that we've seen what the dynamic is of rightward movement in the Tory in, in Tory policy, which is basically that as they run out of of fat, they start cutting bone and cutting mm. bone involves mm. things like looking at the looking at the institutions cutting season, looking at the institutions that they have in the past liked, looking at a lot of the institutions that even capital likes. Right. Mm. Like there's mm. no like capital or a certain kind of capital uh, tends to quite like things like international human rights legislation because it makes it more predictable to to um to operate between countries mm. right yeah and it already stacks the deck in favor of the yeah. state like you you're sort of you are walking away from a card game that is rigged in your and, favor and what the and this is it well it reminds me a little bit of what they've of even what things like they've done with either how brexit works or even like the liz trust budget which is that you harness these forces because they're useful in the short term and then, and then you, don't worry about you, it. the sort of institutionalist Tory, as opposed to the revolutionary Tory, right? They're all revolutionaries underneath. It's just how many layers of institutionalist underneath or are you a revolutionary, right? Because you say, oh, well, mm. hang on. This, it's always this far and no further. It would be like, well, mm. I liked all of the austerity, but I really don't like all of this sort of, um, you might say, uh, reaction to it that has sort of an anti-establishment reaction to it. I really, really liked um, all of the electoral successes that we've gotten over pandering to like racist Daily Mail readers and encouraging them to be more racism, make racist in a feedback loop with the papers. Mm. But hang on, now we're getting rid of the Human Rights Act. This far and no further. This far and no further. And it's what because that engine, you, it's an elephant that you think you can ride if you're a part of, as you say, the Cowards Caucus, which is you say, well, we're we know we have They've to got be, to get a better name. <laughs> we know we have to be racist, but we feel squeamish about it. We think we can ride the wave of nativism and then stop it. We think we can sit on and ride this elephant and then stop it where we choose. And again and again and again and again, it shows that, no, the elephant always just keeps going. Right. Mm. Like the once and, you start and it never forgets. Yeah. yeah. So like once, and you're playing polo for some reason. And, I mean the the post Thatcher settlement, right? Post Thatcher settlement that we've talked about before. That it demands this kind of maximalism, because it says, look, here's the deal, right? We are going to we're going to keep cutting away bits of the state, and we're going to give what we're going to give a favored section of the population is bigotry for them. We're gonna we are going to enact punishment on people you don't like. Hmm. Um, but the problem is, is that the, is that soon and not it, it was always a problem, right? But when sort of nice squishy liberals start getting really worried about it, it's because that has to keep going, right? That can't stop. If you're going to keep on winding down the state as a going concern, if you're going to keep operating according to ironclad fiscal rules, if you have to keep giving out the bigotry to keep people politically engaged, you have well, you're going to run out of people to be bigoted against that were originally OK to be bigoted well, against this as far is, as you're concerned. This mm. is the same thing that's happened with the, the new migration rules <laughs> where um, you now have to make an impossible amount of money if you want to like mm. uh, have a partner that, you know, uh, your spouse or you know prospective spouse immigrate to the UK. Um, and it's it's the thing now where you're seeing on on Twitter Oh, this is affecting me, a Guardian columnist, yes. right? Because uh, in the same way that we've cut public services until there's nothing left to cut, that the like really, really obvious stuff where you go, wait a second, why isn't there an ambulance turning up anymore? Mm -hmm. In the same way, now we've kind of we've brutalized all of the people who, in the sort of imagination of a Guardian columnist, do not matter, and now we're starting to brutalize the people who do, which is their kids who can't like you know move home with their American girlfriend or whatever. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, look, look, the NHS is fucked. Everything's fucked. You can't get a doctor. You can't get an ambulance, whatever. But listen to this. 
Some unemployed geezer in France had to watch a PowerPoint presentation about Binance <laughs> due, to, due to forces which are in some ways connected. So isn't that worth it, really, yeah. when you think about it? And, and when I talk about cuts as well, I'm not just talking about cuts to service, but mm. even just sort of reductions in things like basic decency, right? And yeah, when well, I, say I can't basic, afford that When anymore. I say basic decency, I'm not using this in a, uh, a sort of pearl clutch and columnist sense, but mm. in just... It, for example, in reductions you kind, in treating... You kind yeah. of can. People yeah. aren't nice anymore. <laughs> yeah. But what I also am talking about is... Well, like, I've read Pearl Clutching's columns. I mean, she is, <laughs> she is rabid. <laughs> but what I mean really, what I mean really is about like treating people as humans. The slow, you can mm. look at the way that Britain has treated its, Im- treated its immigrants as being a one-way street of mm. things getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. And eventually, just like you can't keep cutting till you hit bone, you can't keep tightening until you start being like, well, what we want to do is in conflict with the basic law. Mm. Yeah. And Not so, Hong but, Kong's yeah. basic law, a different, a different but, law. But what so, if we so, change the law? Yeah, exactly. What if what if those contradictions that we've sort of heightened to a completely untenable level? What if mm. we just said uh, no, they're not. Mm. What if we did the plot of the film The Purge? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's it's getting closer every year. I feel, Alice, mm. you've basically raised the Keir Starmer strategy. <laughs> yes, Look, yes. For one night only. <laughs> Crime will be legal. <laughs> now, I don't encourage people to engage in crime, but if you are planning to engage in crime, this would be the time to do so, to engage in crime in the correct way, in a responsible and proportionate way. I, yeah. myself, will be engaging in a small amount of crime, perhaps graffiti, or or not putting a coin in the honesty box when taking one of those charity sweeties. However... <laughs> I, d- I will be shaking my head as I do it so that people know that I disapprove of the action and so that in the morning we all come back much more responsible members of society for having seen the damage that this kind of reckless rule unfollowing can wreak. Yeah. <laughs> do, do, just um, do, do a little bit of crime, get it all out of your system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I, I, I do like the idea of Keir Starmer just like, I'm not going... Again, we don't know what he does with his car, but be like the, the crime mm. I'm going to do on purpose. That's right. I'm going to tear up this fixed charge penalty notice that I got for not wearing a seatbelt. Just like watching, watching the clock as the second hand hits the beginning of Purge Night, holding a captive bolt pistol aimed at an alpaca in the other hand. Oh my god! If that worked, <laughs> if they introduced Purge rules and you could just sit in your house safely and just tear up every parking and speeding ticket you'd ever got, I'd be like, bring it in, <laughs> bring it in. <laughs> Uh, so, Starmer said, the government has scaled down its predictions for how many people would be deported to Rwanda, saying, mm. the current number of people sent there remains stubbornly consistent at zero. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this, is, this is the Starmer line, right? Yeah. Is that, like, it's wrong to do this, but it's also pathetic that they can't. I, I mean, to be fair, that it, he sort of it's has true. a point there. Yeah, it's, it's quite true. funny that they also can't even do the bad thing that they want to mm. do. But it's the, um, the problem is, 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 is Labour is saying... This is expensive. We'll stop the boats a better way. Yeah, that's right. With yeah. apps or something. I don't know. So, by, by talking to them, by saying, look, you're coming here in the incorrect way. What you need to do is fill out a form. Wait for purge night. The form is illegal. <laughs> yeah, come, yeah, come on purge night. You're a night. legal migrant if you survive the night, you know? Yeah, that's um, right. So, how, so he also he noticed... I'll tell you what, I back people who've come from Syria to survive the purge night. <laughs> and much then, more then so than the average British person. We're, we're, we're selecting for the kind of uh, strongest and toughest uh, survivors of purge night to then run the NHS. So... I d- yeah, I mean, a guy a guy who's made it on a dinghy to Calais is going to twat the average guy who hates him. I'm, f- I'm pretty confident. <laughs> <laughs> so, it says, at the same time, Article 19 of the treaty says that parties shall make arrangements for the United Kingdom to resettle a portion of Rwanda's most vulnerable refugees in the United Kingdom. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> well, no, because the treaty's going to be null and void yes, immediately because yeah. it breaks, like, five international laws. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Um. So, so what, what, we, what we have done, and this is, again, Starmer's line that this is wasteful and also funny, and I you mm. hate to have to hand it to him, what we yeah. have done is we have handed the Rwandan government 140 million quid to do fuck all. Yeah. Which, I mean, to be fair, in the context of people we've handed 140 million quid yeah. to do fuck all to, it's probably not even the most egregious. No. Um, there are a bunch of people who just live in Suffolk who that's happened to. 
<laughs> living, yeah, just, just being here in Matt Hancock. Matt Hancock. <laughs> yeah, with the richest postcode in the UK. People who live within a mile of Matt Hancock. Just so, giving giving Rwanda's government 140 million quid and being like, get yourself something nice. Don't spend yeah, they, it all in one place. They're going to turn that refugee camp into a fucking parkour center. But fundamentally, <laughs> right, right. What what Starmer is saying is is that he and the Labour Party would stop people mm-hmm. coming to Britain more effectively. That he would also retain most of the new immigration changes because there again this consensus that immigration into the country has to come down which is unfightable and as long as that consensus remains there's going to be the full fat option of Suella Braverman saying I'm going to do the full promise mm. of this nativism that you're trying to harness yeah, so jump us onto the years and years timeline yeah. yeah 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 like she's showing you her presentation and you're like this is illegal because this is just children of men that you've put a label on <laughs> you have plagiarized children of men so and the other thing right is uh is, is that the the exchange concluded by saying um starmer saying there was mention of margaret thatcher how did the tory party go from quote up yours dolores to quote take our money kagame not kind of a forced rhyme there oh i fucking love her as a keir zinger yeah um sunak responded saying uh, Starmer can quote role play Margaret Thatcher all he wants, but when it comes to Europe, his answer is the same: yes, yes, yes. <sighs> two, Starmer two, can two role men. play Margaret Thatcher all he wants, but when I ask my wife to do it, she says it's weird. <laughs> D- two two men in a massive LARP, each accusing the other of LARPing, is yeah. just just the <laughs> perfect arguing pick. over who will drink out of the bottle. Yeah, yeah, genuinely, it's it's like this fucking rearguard action in the last six months of Tory bullshit, which is mm. you know just ramping up so there's some. New depressing story every day. Uh, there's a you know a bunch more trans shit. Inevitably, there's a bunch more migration shit. Inevitably, and it's just like this is it. It, uh, it, it it's it, it exists solely to like stress us out and make a Daily Mail reader who is gonna die on election night when uh you know Hamas loving Keir Starmer is the next prime minister of the United Kingdom. Uh, you know, mm. has you know, uh, make them feel a little bit more comfortable in their last sort of mm. few months. Yeah, it's Tap reprehensible. Beer armor. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, this is something that I think Alex, right, you and I talked about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Excuse I, me. I welcome the kafar, <laughs> but I would encourage them to go further by so, reverting to the light of Islam. Sort of lapsing towards Tuck Fear armor <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, no, negative di- that negative dialectics is when the thesis and the antithesis just negate one another and all you're left with is two men claiming to be the heir to Thatcher and calling the other soft. That's yeah. right. Well, I mean... Uh, it, it's kind of like the, the, uh, the late Roman Republic in that way. Mm-hmm. Everyone's arguing over, over whose who's dad she really was, you know. <laughs> yeah, Patrick, we should get Patrick Wyman back on. Yeah, yeah, we should. And um, but but the question is, who is Lepidus? Um, mm. my my vote is possibly. I mean, possibly fucking uh, Robert Jenrick. Yeah, could be. I yeah. mean, he he does. You know, if I can use a different Roman, have a lean and hungry look. You know. Hmm. Um. All right. I, I want to move on to one more thing before we talk about it. either a startup or an article. Uh. Do you like jacking it? Oh, I'd love to, yeah. But, mm. but most mm. of all, I love to, to jack it in a way that the government doesn't closely follow. Oh, bad luck, I'm afraid. <laughs> Fuck. Damn. Yep. Um, that's because the online safety bill is now law. Another impossible uh-huh. thing. Another yes. thing that they were told time and time again. Every w- means of implementing this is totally impractical and will make you look stupid. And then they go, all right, fine, we'll do it anyway. Well, here's the thing, though, actually. Mm. The a, a startup called Yoti, uh, this isn't the startup today, this is just an, another one, has come in to say, hey, we, can, uh, we have AI that can mm. age estimate people based on a photograph. Oh, we've that, got the pedophilia AI. That, but the thing is, that's really dark because there's a migration angle there, because the home office is always, always in like tribunals and shit with migrants, with refugees and asylum seekers, who it's disputing the age of. One of their favorite things to do is to go, listen, you, you might say that you're a 12-year-old boy, but we think you're actually 46, and therefore we're going to deport you back to Syria. And if they... So if the online safety bill right requires an AI, you know, age estimation service, not only is that software going to exist, it's going to exist in government, and then you can say in a court in an immigration tribunal, this is this is the world leading thing that we've determined, you know, that that the government already uses to determine who's allowed to jack off or not. 
Um, we, we, it's already being used on the national gooning database. Isn't that enough, therefore, to deport <laughs> someone to Syria with? Look, if you want to work out if a boy is underage and you're the British government, all you've got to do is show their picture to various members of the House of Lords and have them hooked up to a heart rate monitor and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the... this new age detector. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> We've invented a new age detector. He's one of the remaining hereditary peers. That's right. <laughs> um, you know, the uh, y- Yoti is the, com- mm-hmm. the company that I think they're going to have do it, which is this. A- it has an age estimator, but also that's hooked into a Yoti citizen card. So the dream no. of Tony Blair, yeah, oh. just like VHS, VHS won because that's where porn went. The dream of Tony Blair may be realized by British great the great British gooning. Which Citizen. is ironic because Betamax would be a much better name for a porn ID card. Citizen, present your ID card in order to goon. Like, yeah. And I mean, the, the just aside from anything else, right, the blackmail possibilities, because the British government and its, you know, its contractors, notoriously bad at securing information in yeah. whatever form. And even yeah. if you say, oh, this isn't identifiable or, you know, this isn't tied to whatever, like, usage or whatever. We delete your photo as soon as we verify yeah, 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 the information. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like, first of all, that's always a lie. Second of all, like, there, is, there are potentially compromising things with the question, is this person on the National Gooning Database? Mm-hmm. Uh, wh- wh- why have they been, like, referred onto the National Gooning Database? Because have they clicked mm-hmm. there from, like... You know, biggaycocks.com, and therefore yeah. you're, you know, you can make some inference about their sexuality from I that. I was only on biggaycocks.com to get directions away from there. <laughs> I thought it was going to help improve the UK's uh, chicken industry. That's right. Uh, yeah. Now, and also, what I have no problem with big gay cocks. They have no interest to me personally. <laughs> but I also I don't reject them. I think that's a that's a fun website for certain members of the community to visit. I personally was on bigstraightcocks.com. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so you had a lot of star mileage today. Yeah, there we go. Um, no, but so the just for for Americans, we'll back up a little context or other non-British people. Mm. Uh, the online safety bill. Has a huge. It's a very broadly drafted piece of legislation, and that, that's how you know it's good. <laughs> that once again creates a lot of um, things that companies can't really do. Mm. Uh, oh, right. Yeah. Quick question: Is it carefully worded? No. Oh, I mean, because that there is. I, I I sympathize a tiny bit in that there is a harm. Right, in that, like, mm. pornography is clearly extremely available on the internet. The mm. kind of pornography that's available on the internet is. Again, not mild, right? And it's being increasingly sort of like delivered involuntarily to to like children and particularly children at like lower and lower ages all the time, right? But because this is already a culture war, all of the sex education that can be delivered in like a responsible way, that Mm. has to happen in like a less explicit and like older age as the pornography is taking over in the opposite and so now that's grooming yeah so now you have this situation where you know the the fucking kids can i'll do the adbusters thing can recognize riley reed but not the national flag or whatever Mm. (laughs) more children can recognize riley reed Riley Reed on the national flag (laughs) you're you're going into like sex education at the age of like 16 or whatever not knowing how someone gets pregnant but knowing what back shots are and it's it's like this is no idea how to draw a union jack Yeah, I, I mean, it, this is clearly this is fucked, right? But I'm I'm mm. not sure that the answer is the, the big gooning database. Well, it's mm. it's a, ultimately right. This is so many of the problems that people have that they get ultimately from their lives being lived solitary and mediated by a computer or a phone. It's, mm. it's, those yeah. problem, yeah. Those pro- those are problems of alienation. Good evening, listener. Yeah. <laughs> those, those are problems of alienation, right? Those mm. are problems of people being we've, separated we've, we've from one another. We've alienated our terrible Guna children. Like, mm. like they're going to have to take care of us in our old age. And you know, I, I just, I don't think it's necessarily a conservative point of view that if you can't cross the road on your own, you should not know who Mia Khalifa is, right? But. I warned me, Guna children. I warned them. I said, if you support Arsenal, you're no son of mine. They didn't listen. <laughs> yeah, well, look, in five years' time, there won't be any like old age homes. There'll just be old age goon caves. And uh, <laughs> there won't be any homes. There'll just be goon caves. And uh, you'll have goon cave landlords. And it'll be like a whole thing. Like, you know, we, I, I'm choosing to see this as an opportunity um, where a new real estate market of 
goon based uh mm. well, well goon based property <laughs> we, uh, we is have, there for the take we have failed this generation or two coming <laughs> so so badly not only have we like made their planet uninhabitable in their lifetimes but we've mm. also gotten them all hooked on the worst porn imaginable and then, but then they'll be on a, a database if they goon to it. So it's a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I was listening to a, no, uh, a radio I mean, my, debate yeah. about this. Of what, course, Jeremy Vine. Of course, of course, it was on <laughs> Jeremy Fat Ropes, and um, there they were just, you know, it just, just the, the framing of the debate where it's like, oh, you know, like uh, this may not have been on Jeremy Vine. Now I don't, I don't want to impugn Jeremy Vine. I, there was a radio subject about it anyway, and they're just kind of being like. Well, you know, something's got to be done about teenagers accessing porn, which, like, as Alice said, there are some issues with it, but also this is something that teenagers have done since, like, at least the 20th century, yeah, like, sure. accessing porn to some extent. Whereas, like, oh, you know what's not a problem? You know what couldn't cause any issues whatsoever? Having a fucking biometric database of anyone who's ever had a wank. <laughs> like, there's no way... Yeah, if a 13-year-old wanks to a Riley Reid video, that's a disaster. That's this guy... Also, we won't do any sex education or child safeguarding in any meaningful sense because we don't really care about children. But as a child war, as a child war, as a culture war issue, that's mm. terrible. However, a child war issue. A child, if a you child, have a child war, is would be good. Yeah. That's right. Bring in Coney now. But if you have a database of every single guy who's ever wanked to anything and what he or she or they have wanked to, you know, that's just fine. What's mm. what's the problem? What? How could that be misused? Well, I, I can't guess, think of a I reason. Guess it makes no one blackmailable because yeah. everyone's. On there, oh, you know everyone's yeah. fucked. Imagine, imagine getting access to Peter Ma Wa Mandelson's wank bank. Good God! <laughs> <laughs> well, we we I trust mean, your research. Just just, l just lure yeah. pack on stairs. <laughs> what is it? There is a distinct difference, I think, between like I don't know, finding a Playboy at mm. the age of thirteen some years ago, and mm. then yeah. the fact that so I many like the articles, so many, yeah, finding it for like you know, Updike on the Martini. Mm. Um, you used to have to yeah, read I mean, news in briefs in the sun. Yeah. And clearly, but, this stuff is not determinative, well, like, well, like, right? Because I, I, like, yeah, when, I, I, when I was in school, like, yeah, obviously, fucking like FHM or whatever or Maxim was like around, sure. And can we honestly say that I turned out normal? I I don't think <laughs> so, right? Well, look, but look, like this this is yeah, this is also an opportunity in some ways because it might bring back the it might bring back like the nuts and zoo magazines. Yeah. I'm not endorsing them. Mm. What I am, but what I am saying is that without nuts and zoo magazine uh, and the and the wonderful articles that were written in there, we wouldn't have people yeah. like Martin Daubney. That's true. Uh, Lucy Pinder, society needs you back. <laughs> Lighting up the Kelly Brook signal. <laughs> there is yeah. there is a qualitative difference between between that and how most feeds of content on the internet now are designed to be as addictive and um to as, as stakes raising as possible. Mm, mm. You know, uh, there and it's it, the the, the yeah. teens watching like worryingly intense BDSM pornography with Subway Surfer on the corner and like <laughs> uh, funny guy uh, family funny. Fucking hell! An <laughs> family funny guy. F family funny guy. Yeah, I'm I'm turning eighty years old as I talk about this. <laughs> and Family Guy funniest moments. Are, are, yeah, are American the top. stepdad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> but the, I, it's like I, the Georgian like illegal <laughs> copy of American Dad. <laughs> but I think to to try guy to with a mustache. Yeah, I work for the CIA. <laughs> Probably does. To be fair, <laughs> come here. I'm going to fuck the alien. <laughs> I, I I've just been elected for. Georgia Dream Party, and I'm going to be Ukraine Economy Minister. The alien is called Idrak now. <laughs> uh, I was doing an impression of a specific guy who probably uh, was CIA. Maybe. Uh, so, going back though, right, it's that this is one of these things, it's a problem of alienation, that mm. is, if you try to solve with a big <laughs> gooning what George database, and Roger the alien thought. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you try to solve a problem of alienation with a big gooning database, uh, it's not going to work for like nine different reasons, that's one of them, but also... It's worth it maybe at another point talking about the rest of the stuff in the online safety bill, which, again, it comes back to, yes, these companies need to be held to account and brought under control, but to create your bill from largely a culture war standpoint is, um, mm. it's an odd one. But this is anyway. all the handiwork of Nadine Doris before she was forced out. Mm. And yeah. Yeah. As, she, as she notes in her own book, people kept telling her within the Tory party that you got to like kick this shit into the long grass because it's not going to work. Um, and mm. she, she forced it through. So thank you, Nadine. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to talk about prophetic AI and thanks to the one million people for sending this to us. 
Oh. Oh, all of our Hamas followers. <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, prophetic AI. And I'm just going to start with the, with the first logline. Prometheus stole fire from the gods, so too will we steal dreams from the prophets. Um, <laughs> Some so, shit that you, you know, say before you're about to get electrocuted. Like, what... You know, you know what this is reminding me of. Have you seen the Have you seen the screenshot that periodically does the rounds on Twitter, where it's like people post it like "Who Who, who TF my mum texting?" and it's like a guy, it's like a guy who's in, saved in the phone is just Pharaoh, and she's like, "Pharaoh, please, my temple is empty. It needs you." And then he just replies, "Black goddess," and that's like the end of the screenshot. Uh-huh. Like that, that is the vibe of this copy. Indeed, yeah. So Prometheus <laughs> stole fire from the gods. We will steal dreams from the prophets. What do we think this does? I mean, this is already very alarming, since it seems to have been founded by Sephiroth. Um, mm. I mean, I- I'm assuming dreams here isn't meant literally, right? Like, it's got to be uh, like this, uh, like aspiration kind of dreams, right? Okay, so you're putting your marker down on dreams not being meant literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, cause, because that would be insane, obviously. Eh, wrong. Dreams are meant literally. Uh, oh, yeah, they're doing Inception. They're gonna fucking get into your head and steal your actual dreams. They're gonna, they're <laughs> gonna they've got seven fat cows and seven thin cows, and they're gonna make them fight each other. <laughs> what Did the you fuck? dream of that? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I have very biblical yeah, dreams. I, yeah. I, 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 I have an idea. Is it, is it like a Netflix for dreams? Like you can choose what dreams. Oh, to have. you're so close. Oh, so, so the only thing on my Netflix selection I is like that everyone actually... is mad at me again. Fantastic. Wait, 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 wait. They're going to steal the IP of your dreams and use it to make a Netflix show. Mm, My dream in this particular scenario, based on the idea that I had, which is no longer the thing, would have been, uh, would have been an episode of Family Funny Guy. <laughs> yeah, you, you can make a Netflix like with content harvested directly from my dreams, and it's everyone is mad at Alice, or it's Family Funny Guy. Also mm. a Georgian knockoff. Where's both? You like one, yeah. one on each side. Yeah. <laughs> well, Hussein is Roger the Alien. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, so, uh, <laughs> so I just I like the idea. I love the idea that you, you fir- when you thought of um, a dream, hi. you first went to yeah. seven fat cows and seven <laughs> pink cows. It's the most be, famous it'll, dream of all time. It would be very name funny. a more famous dream. I'll wait. It'd be very funny if you did if you did the dream Netflix thing and you just perfectly independently dreamed a Netflix original series. Like, yeah, I yeah. I, I had like a long sleep and I dreamed like eighteen ninety nine. So, yeah, I guess the I OA just, came to me in a dream. I just don't know my Bible. <laughs> Second, Alice, yeah. that you're the closest to figuring out what this thing actually does. It, uh, what? Allowing you to summon Netflix series that don't exist. Okay. It's a device. Mm-hmm. It's an Always item. You can, hold, you can hold it in your hand. It's very season one, is mm. what this is. It's called the Halo, right. uh, their device. It's a non-invasive neural stimulator to stabilize and induce lucid dreaming. This is very like something you would get given in a later Assassin's Creed game. Yeah. Like, yeah. Does, this, does this shit work? So I'm always hesitant to say no, it doesn't work because that seems quite obvious. Uh, I'm more in- interested in talking about, okay, what if it does? What does that mean? Well, then you do Assassin's Creed and you learn <laughs> how course. to do parkour. I- Ironically, that sounds like something that the founder would say to a team of investors. Look, I'm not so interested in saying, does it work? I'm more interested in saying, what if it did? Well, I'll give you Dude, a peek. Le- learning parkour at the Paul Kagame Parkour Center. <laughs> that's, 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 yeah, right. that's, that's a new Netflix series. No, I'll give that's a, a dream I had. I'll give, I'll give the, I'll yeah, give the uh, this Georgian guy there. <laughs> there Peter Griffin Kelly with the big mustache. Too. Uh, You've got to transfer your weight as you get over the obstacle. <laughs> I am Georgian Matt Hancockishvili. <laughs> a peek behind the curtain is, it's very easy to look at a startup and say, well, that won't work. That gives mm. you about 30 seconds of podcast. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so let's say, let's take the very real possibility that this mm-hmm. is just hokum mm-hmm. and say, okay, okay. They may, let's put that over there. Fine. They say, the I com- am Boris Johnson as they, and I will teach you to play with that. <laughs> <laughs> the combination of ultrasound and machine am, am learning I models. Am I dreaming this right now? Like, <laughs> you're going to be the champion of all the Caucasus, <laughs> and no one will talk about MMA anymore. You bring <laughs> Wiffwaff to the Caspian Basin. <laughs> <laughs> but this is this is still family funny guy. Yes, that's right. Yeah, okay. but wait, no, it's my dream. Oh, of course. Yeah, <laughs> Peter. <laughs> Peter, are you learning? Are you learning with Waff from George and Boris Johnson again? Oh, freaking sweet! 
Learning, learning whiff wear from the Georgian version of Boris Johnson. Are you again? <laughs> it's obviously a dream. Don't be so ridiculous. That would never happen in real life. Our listeners are going to have some very strange dreams tonight. That's right. Yeah, it's that right. dreaming as directed by your favorite podcast. So this is weirder than the time I dreamed I was learning whiff wear from George and Boris Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't. We don't have a clip for that. I guess we don't. You know, I really thought National Gooning Database was going to be the big hit here. But no, I could never have predicted George and Whitwa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hey y'all! <laughs> <laughs> Just all of the characters. Uh, we want to do them all. You want to run through them all? <laughs> <laughs> Peter, you can't learn whiff waff from former Prime Minister Boris Johnson. He's not even Georgian. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, he's Turkish. Yeah. Okay. That's right. All right. I call him to Feffel. <laughs> so in this case, like like Joe Swanson is like a sort of 2018 lib who's yeah. like, oh, Alexander de Feffel. That's yeah. right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same voice as David Putty. He could be here as well. Yeah, we're both there. <laughs> yeah, I'm the other guy. It's the same voice. It's confusing in an audio medium. I used to go out with Elaine on Seinfeld. Okay, all right. All right. Let's wrap. Bo- George and Boris Johnson has grown too many legs and needs to be wrapped up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is also the most nightmarish <laughs> end of that dream. He, he's you know? the hundred legged monster yeah. that mm. keeps the titans in hell. Makes, it makes you very good at whiff waff, man. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. You'd, well, you'd want more. You'd want a hundred hands, really, but that yeah, guy's yeah, busy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. uh, so, the combination of ultrasound. Remember what we're talking about? He's on the gooning <laughs> database. He's on every country's <laughs> gooning <laughs> database. In, in the center of the panopticon, jerking off in the guard tower. No, if the guy with a hundred arms is jacking everyone off, that's the loophole. Because you're like, well, I'm not jacking off. Like, if that guy happens to jack me off, what? I'm, uh. Yeah, the National Gooning Database has one member. That you have the one guy in Britain who runs everything, and then you have the one guy yeah. in Britain who jacks everyone off. Take it up with the jacking oaf. <laughs> yeah, remember that. Now there's an OG. Any listeners old enough to remember that one? If you're old enough to remember that. You're old enough to goon in Britain nowadays. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, remember what we're talking about? We're talking about prophetic AI. Yeah. A startup mm. that hundreds of people, not hundreds, many, many people have sent in. Like, oh boy, I can't wait for them to talk about this clearly insane startup that where the copy's written by Sephiroth. And we're like, anyway, here it is. Whoopsie daisy, here's five minutes of George and Peter Griffin. <laughs> because, because I couldn't remember the name of Family Guy 15 <laughs> minutes earlier. <laughs> Freaking sweet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hope nice, you- I've learned to play with one. I hope, <laughs> hope you didn't want to hear about this company because it's just been all George and Boris Johnson, Peter Griffin fever dream here in the studio. <laughs> oh, it's ridiculous. All right, all right. We'll, bla- we'll blast back. Well, we're blasting back. The combination of ultrasound and machine learning models. <laughs> Hold it together, Riley. You can do it. Going to try and talk about a machine learning model? Allows us to, de- machine learning allows model us to detect <laughs> when dreamers are in REM and induce and stabilize mm. lucid dreams. Yeah. Um, yeah, when the dreamers start singing, um, you know, uh, that's me in the corner. That's me in the spotlight. <laughs> so, with it, we will pursue the answers to life's biggest questions. Okay, which are? Can you work while you sleep? Awesome. No, I don't want to. Well, you can if you're a ping pong player. <laughs> Like, because you're getting trained in your dream by George and Boris. Yeah, you're okay, going to learn that, that you're going to practice again the hardest <laughs> opponent at all. Uh, George, George and Boris. George, 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 are, Milo, are you feeling all right? I'm having a How stroke. How many fingers are you yeah. holding up? Are they fast? I, I smell toast. Uh, <laughs> I am beautiful, George and Boris Johnson. I am I am ripped and oiled. All women desire me. I have 4,000 children. <laughs> all of them work in the vineyards. <laughs> so... They make dumplings for me. I become very strong. Freaking sweet, Milo. Freaking sweet. Freak and sweet. <laughs> Here are. What's the, so they say? It uses focused ultrasound signals to activate the dreaming state, which Eric Wahlberg claims could allow workers the chance to practice presentations uh, or do creative on, problem on, solving. On. Eric Wahlberg? Well, like what? Mark Wahlberg's Mark's like fail brother. W o l l b e r g. Oh, yeah. I'm afraid yeah, they, not. Ch- they Wahlberg. changed Wahlberg. to the Ellis Island, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Boston could, Ellis Island could allow workers the chance <laughs> to practice demos or perform creative problem solving for difficult tasks. Mm. In lucid dreams, 
You're freed from the conventional laws of physics, gravity, I, conservation I of energy. I hate this lucid dreaming shit for exactly this reason. Where it's like, listen, it's the one time in in like my sort of my life when no one can bother me is when I'm asleep. I don't have any responsibilities, and now you want to like add that to my time management bullshit. It's so mm. insulting. I say, a CEO could practice for an upcoming board meeting. An athlete, wait, but who's at your board reading? George and Peter Griffin? Like, that would be so weird. But also, if your you're just- Your slime deck is very confusing. Also, <laughs> if, if, what if that CEO just end up in some kind of, like, living hell, where he has, he or she, has no idea if they're dreaming or not, because all of their dreams are just practicing for real life. Inception where they also, real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're- yeah, it basically. You're, it's a hell where you don't know I, what's real and if you're asleep or not. I don't want to mm. do this. I want to like go and dream my own shit where like er everyone is mad at me. Like just leave me alone. Let me <laughs> let me be uncomfortable and and nervous, you know? I seen hell tea. Hell for Italians. It's an Irish bar where everyone's a Georgian guy trying to teach you to play ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> so Wahlberg founded Prophetic in March alongside CTO Wesley Lewis Barry the 3rd who was previously creating <laughs> augmented reality art with Grimes. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, nice. Uh, the two met through a, huge, a mutual friend, Wahlberg having formerly worked at Nobi, an education uh, tech setup, and Praxis City, the paradigm-funded startup looking to build a futuristic intentional community in the Mediterranean. Take me down to the Praxis oh. City. Wow. So, they say, if you look at the history of prophets, whether it's Abraham, Muhammad, or Buddha, they receive their prophetic wisdom from dreams. This is not the goal true. here. That's not mm. true. That this theologically, that's not the case. Un unhesitatingly reciting the Shahada in my lucid dream. Mm -hmm. <sighs> the goal here mm. is to make everyone a prophet and to give people access to prophetic wisdom, knowledge, and interface. You know, I. <sighs> I'm having. <laughs> I I I I have some. I have some questions about yeah. what they think a prophet is. I, I, I I'm um, not. I've I've been on my own religious journey lately, and I'm not sure where mm. that's where that's taking me exactly. But this is the most haram anything mm. has ever been. Like, yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, hey, idols hey, in the car, but was less haram than this is. You better not be receiving the light of Islam from George and Boris Johnson in there. It doesn't even make sense. They're <laughs> orthodox. Why do I sound like Boston Asimov? I've been assigned. Uh, you need to you need to work on your on your lowest. This is the danger. Peter, you've got to keep it very nasal. Peter. It's only supposed to sell George and Brandy. Yeah. Wahlberg uh, was in, by the way, to, Hussein, to answer your question, what they think of a prophet is, is the CEO of a religion. Oh. Yeah. Do they actually say that? Because that is believable. That's the heavy implication. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. yeah, like, prophets went and got their ideas from religions in dr for religions and dreams, so you mm. too can go get your ideas for the mm. quarterly board yeah. meeting also mm. in a dream. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm sure it's only a matter yeah. of time. Muhammad went on a winged horse uh, and gave a, uh, gave, gave a slideshow presentation, and that's how, mm. that's how Islam was formed. <laughs> well, really, I mean, like, the apostles were Jesus' co-founders, and they helped him disrupt the world of religion and the Roman Empire. The only re per reason... Muhammad's I TEDx Medina... To very mm. poorly received. I should the say. The only, oh. the only reason I think this is possibly real is that if you look at Masayoshi Son's slide decks, he's clearly been dreaming them for years. Yeah, that is true. Uh, says, <laughs> Wahlberg said, George and Boris Johnson has taught Masayoshi Son a lot. Planning for prophetic began in 2018 and came after years of study. Um, he's inspired by the Axial Age period, which was characterized by broad changes in religious, philosophical, and metaphysical thought that occurred in various locations between the 8th and 3rd century BCE. All of these so motherfuckers want... think they're Akhenaten. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it genuinely is the texting the Pharaoh shit. Yeah. I think of myself as kind of a Homeric bard of Silicon Valley. <laughs> so... Uh, the whole idea with re getting reservations, so you can't buy one, but you can pay them $100 in an escrow fund to quote-unquote reserve one, uh -huh. uh, is we're essentially creating an order book so that we can then partner with a tier one manufacturer like can, Foxconn. Can, can, you, can you describe, what is wait, the wait, wait. device? Foxconn were like the bad guys from fucking Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> 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 I remember that game very differently. But like, is 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 it like is it a helmet? Is it like oh, a sleep it's, mask? What do you? It's a headband. Oh, so so, so awesome. So you're gonna look like uh, the fucking uh, like the righteous Tenenbaums. 
Righteous? Well, it's... Th that's not right. <laughs> I'm just, my brain is melting out of my fucking ears, dude. Do, do we, are we sure, right, that it's not on the right timeline for me to have been eating beef in the 90s and now it's starting to fuck me up? Where, because... where are the rats just heading back? <laughs> That's I'm crazy. I, I I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> you're the evangelical tenant. You you look like you're in cryo prison from like um demolition man basically. Like you got mm -hmm. the headband for being. I think you're talking um, about me. I'm, I, I I feel that way to be <laughs> honest. You know. Um, they say, but so that's the idea, right? Is Roy, that, Royal Tannenbaum. Yeah. So you were thinking of the righteous gemstones, maybe? Yeah, I, I literally yeah. was, and I, yeah. I I got the two. I tripped over myself, and nah, now they're basically the same thing. I I you assume. Were the, you were the Royal Tannenbaums. You fuck. We're all being filmed in perfect symmetry by Wes Anderson. Who is that? <laughs> oh. I oh. hope he's not filmed any of that <laughs> stuff we did in Paris. Fucking hell. Anyway. So also, I love the idea that like. They're trying to make the thing that gives you the power of a prophet of God at the suicide factory. Like, mm. oh, we want to work with Foxconn. Yeah. And, and you look like Richie Tannenbaum. So, yeah. perfect. I do. Suicide factory sounds like an E&M <laughs> Banks. Uh. So, um, let's say, uh, academics, let's say, caution against continuous lucid dreaming, say it can disrupt sleep patterns and impact mental health. Uh-oh. Um, but what if, it, what if your mental health doesn't matter when you've got the wealth at the boardroom of success? Yeah, well, that's true. You can you can convert so many people to waiters if you can lucid dream. That's all right. You could dream that all your haters are your waiters at the table of success. Mm. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah. though, because it could be quite like mentally hazardous to you. Yeah, because then you could, next time you see one of your haters, you could be like, "Hey, can I get some water over here?" Because you've forgotten that you're dreaming, or are you? Mm. Are you dreaming? Is that, is Boris Johnson Georgian in your dream? Do you even know Boris Johnson? Why is Peter yeah. Griffin there? You need a sort of checksum. You need like the spinning top from Inception, and I, yeah. I think potentially that is the Georgianness or not of Boris Johnson. So yeah. just to establish this as yeah. the like, does he have like a black mustache? <laughs> to establish this as the waking timeline, like the correct one as a baseline for everyone out there, Boris Johnson is not Georgian. Yeah, mm. you see Boris Johnson, and then you look down at that uh, that Soviet um, fucking uh, ethnicity diagram. <laughs> yeah, all the various look... Borises. And you can't quite tell, and then you look all the way down at the at the board table, and you see that it's a ping pong table. You look up, who's there? Peter Griffin. You are Matt Hancock. <laughs> You're in Rwanda, but Rwanda is now known for ping pong and nothing else. <laughs> You're on sort of like Earth 223, where uh, Boris Johnson is Armenian. Also, mm. also, uh, before we... There's one thing I, I, I hate more than I love ping pong, and that is the Turk. <laughs> there's, one, there's one thing I want to end this uh, episode on, though. Mm. <laughs> which is that I was unable to find this is a reference to our previous bonus episode so mm. do go listen to that yeah, if you want to know if you want to know why we're about why I'm about to say what I'm about to say mm. which is that our listeners have located the Bad Obama Blues by George Jarksy. Oh my god. Hell yeah. This, so this our will theme make song, the George and musical accompaniment to me going to my GP to do the cognitive decline test that Trump had done. <laughs> hmm. So, um, George and Boris Johnson teaching you how to draw a clock. Yeah, so, <laughs> if you want to check out and know why we are playing this I'm 2011 era anti-Obama uh, anti song from a teacot, you're going to have to check out the most recent bonus episode. So, without any further ado, thank you very much for listening. Uh, Milo, you're going to be in the Netherlands or whatever. Hello, I'm a Seti and Sarah Palin, and I'm here to tell you <laughs> that Milo Edwards will be on tour in Amsterdam and Rotterdam on the 27th and 26th of January, respectively. Also, other tour dates to be announced, Australia, and so on. Mm, right. And so... That's... Haldeman inaudible. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, otherwise, uh, we will see you on the bonus episode in a few short days. We uh, fucking will. This is George Jarksy with The Bad Obama Blues. Now listen to me, people. There's something that I got to say. It's sure making me upset. With what's happening in my country today You know the federal government's trying so hard To destroy the middle class We got veterans living in the street Cause uh, the system throws them in the trash Get up and fight for the light people 